So um, good afternoon, welcome everyone. Um, today we are two hours early because the presenter, Nia, uh, she's in Hangzhou in China. And so that's why we had to begin a little bit early so she doesn't present around midnight, but in a more, um, in a normal hour for her. So um, Mia, uh, Ye or Ma Ye, um, is a PhD candidate at our faculty, the Faculty of Asian and Middle Eastern Studies. And um, she has a BA from St. Andrews, um, University of St. Andrews in art history and has an MA in art in archeology span from SOAS. Um, so here in uh, Cambridge, she's working on her dissertation which will hopefully be ready in a year. And it will be on this very topic that she's presenting. And this is, uh, the topic is the Goryeo water moon um, paintings of Avalokiteshvara. So please welcome uh, Mia Ma. Okay, uh, thank you so much for uh... Dr. Galambo's kind introduction. I feel very honored to have this opportunity to talk um, about what I'm currently working on. So uh, I wish I could deliver the presentation in Cambridge and meet everyone in person, uh, but hopefully everything will get back to normal soon. Sure. Um, um, so today, um, we are going to uh, look at a set of Afakiteshvara paintings. Uh, I do not want to give them labels of um, identification as the very beginning. Instead, I wanted to explore what can we see from the images and uh, what do we know from the historical documents, such as the dynasty histories, the diaries, um, and the Buddhist sutras. So let's start. In the collection of Daitoguji in Kyoto, a scroll of silk painting with polychrome ink and lavish use of gold measuring 227.9 centimeters in height and 125.8 centimeters in width presents a stunning icon of the haloed Avakiteshvara. So the figure Avakiteshvara uh, is normally identified by the sitting Buddha on the crown as the sutra says, Guan Shi Yin Pusa, Qi Tian Guan Zhong, Yo Yi Li Hua Fu. Sitting in the pose of Roy East, with one leg patterned and one leg crossed, in the grotto canopied by grotesque rocks, the transparent drapery, which inscribed with circular grass pattern in gold powder, shapes the elegant flow of the body. Two slender bamboo. Come straight, uh, come straight out of the large oral, which is encircling Avakiteshvara. With the peony, the azura bird flies down from the top right towards to Avakiteshvara. In the lower section, a group of human figures in much, much smaller scale are making offerings to Avakiteshvara on the currents of water. The scroll does not bear signatures or inscriptions. So the question would be very simple. Who was the patron? Who made this? And for what purpose? Further discovery has found a corpus of Afar Kiteshvara paintings, close to 45 in number, sharing uh, similarities in composition, texture pattern, and color palette with the one we are looking at now. Most of them, around 30 pieces, are currently in the Japanese collections around five in South Korea and 10 most likely in the museums of the United States, France, Germany, and Italy, probably Netherlands. Um, sorry. Yeah, uh, this one with almost identical composition with a Daitoguchi piece now currently kept in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and this one in the Freer Circular uh, Gallery in DC. Uh, this one was donated by the Mr. Charles Lam Freer, who was the founder of the Freer Circular Gallery. Between 1894 and 1911, Freer made five extensive tours by steamship to destinations in Japan, Korea, uh, India, China, and Egypt. 
This scroll was collected during this period of, the, uh, period of time. In his diary, he recounts that as a collector, he appreciated the formal qualities of color, surface, and texture, whatever an object's or origin is. Most of the scrolls of the set in the Western collection do not have a precise label to describe the origin in the very beginning. So um, it's the late 19th century and the early 20th century when they enter uh, the collection. Basically, all of them were painted on silk canvases. Outlines were done first by ink and traced by vermilion pigment of gradients. Mineral pigments were applied to um, both the back and the front of the silk after, the, after it was dyed a light brown color and sized with alum and glue. Most of them are with hanging poles, so they were originally hung scrolls. On the outer surface of the box, story one of the two Abakitashvari paintings collected in the Senoku Hakukokan, a labor written in the Edo period, suggests it was a white robe of Akhidashvara painted by the Chinese Tang Dynasty painter Wu Daozi. And um, the one we were looking at, um, which was kept in the Dai Tukuji, was once attributed to Zhang Sigong. The name of the attributions were later to be uh, proved to be incorrect, but it reflects how parts of Japanese people in the past interpreted this image on the basis of the understandings of karamono exported to Japan. This false attribution was also partly based on the text written um, in the Kundai Kong uh, Sotoki. Uh, which records the guidelines of display and the artifacts collected in the Higashiyama Gyeongsu in the uh, Muromachi period. The beginning chapter uh, gives commentaries and critiques for Chinese painters from the 6th dynasty to the Yuan period, and two artists are mentioned in relevance of the polychrome Buddhist paintings. Wu Daozi and Zhang Sigong specialized in painting Avakiteshvara and Amitabha Buddha. Since most of the Avakiteshvara paintings in this set do not bear inscriptions, Japanese people in the past could easily categorize them into paintings in the style of Zhang Sigong and Wu Daozi. Um, for a long time, these paintings had also once mistakenly been attributed to Chinese professional painters of the Mingzhou workshop because Japanese people had a collection of religious set paintings by the Song Dynasty Ningbo painters, uh, such as the Ten Kings of Hell, Shi Wang Tu, uh, with signatures of the workshop of Southern Song painter Lu Xinzhou, and the famous scrolls of 500 Luo Han done by Lin Tingui and Zhou Zichang. Um, it is noteworthy that the Bureau of Maritime Commerce, Shi Bo Si, was established in Mingzhou in 992 in charge of issuing official permission of the commercial trade to Japan and Korea. Apart from Mizhou, Denzhou, Laizhou in the north, it was from Mingzhou that most of the Song businessmen and officials set out to Goryeo and Japan. It was also the landing port for Goryeo and Japanese people coming to Song and Yuan China. Professor uh, Lotte Ledholz from Hedeberg points out that the artisans in Ningbo workshops make paintings in a way like assembly lines by dividing compositions into segments. The workshop offers sets of segments for a wide range of customers to choose from. Pieces of furniture, such as armchairs here, the tables, the decorations of screens, elements of landscapes such as trees, clouds, and rocks, a test of human figures, and even demons were all singled out as movable parts. The technique of stem cells were used when transferring segments onto the picture ground. Pre-code papers with small holes indicating the contours of the motif were laid on the scroll surface before the powdery pigments were pounced to shape visible outlines on the scroll. Once it was done, a master of painting then would retrace the dotted outlines by using the brush with ink. 
The final stage was carried out by artisans who were skillful in filling colors and making detailed execution. This rationalized process got its advantage of high accuracy of brushwork and high efficiency. Lethos demonstrated that by the uh, 13th century, painting workshops in Ningbo had developed interchangeable formulas or modular structure that painters selected motifs with symbolic meanings from a re repertoire of segments and combine them with minor elaborations or alternations. So I argue that the set of Avangida Shvara painting we are looking at were done in a similar workshop process. That is why both Japanese and Western scholars in the early period attribute them to Chinese painters of the Mingzhong workshop. As I said before that uh, most of the scrolls were anonymous, but the piece formally collected in the uh, Kongo Sama Inn and best full inscription written in gold powder. The text reads, uh, it tells that it was painted by the attendant of inner court, Siu Guban, in the third year of Zhi Zhi, which is 1323, uh, and the monk Yu Zhua was in charge of the financial issue and other matters related to the painting project. Zhi Zhi is the reign title of Emperor Yinzong of the Yuan court. But Yuan Shi does not record uh, the official position of Nei Ban Cong Shi. Even it was done in the Yuan court, the Department of Craftsmanship on British Portraits, Ban Xiang Ti Ju Si, which is affiliated to the Imperial Manufacturers Commission, Jiang Zuo Yuan, and the Painting Bureau, Hua Ju, which is affiliated to the Department of the Court Decoration, Xiu Nei Si, who took the charge of making paintings and statues of Buddhist figures rather than the inner court attendants. More detailed information is given by a copied inscription written by the Japanese surveyor and uh, cartographer Inoue Tadataka in 1812 in his diary. The original text was applied to the surface of the Avakiteshvara painting, which was donated to Kagami Jinja by the monk Ryokun as the second year of Medabu, which was 1391. The text reads, Bao Wu, Yang Liu Guan Yin the inscription uses the reign title Zhi Da of the Emperor Wu Zong of Yuan, and the date is 3010. It also points out the patron is Wang Shufei, and we later found out it was a concubine Suki of the King Chongliu of Koryo Korea. And the text also refused the deficient uh, of workshop labors. King Yu is a painting master who most likely did the outlines of figures and the inscription. He is the attendant of the inner court, Nai Ban a nice rank official at Koryo Archaeobook, which is a court institution in charge of the king's daily life that is recorded in the Goryosa. Igu, Insan, and Songleong are the painters in waiting at the Imperial Painting Academy who makes the coloring together. So my following discussion about this painting will place it into the Yuan colonial relations. After the Goryo court refused uh, the Mongols' request of paying annual tribute, Organic Kahan, Wu Kuotai, started formal invasion to Koryo in 1231. During the years, the Koryo court was frequently requested to send prince and royal members to be as uh, hostages as a precondition of peace suing. Among them includes the crown prince Wang Zhong. At the time, Wang Zhong had a very different mind with his imperial predecessors who had strong distrust of the Mongolians. 
Instead, he believed that a mutually beneficial strategy with the Mongolians would bring him support to attack colonial military families who had actually controlled um, the political power of the kingdom. So with the support of the Kublai, Wang Zhong ascended the throne in 1216 with the title King Wang Zhong, Yuan Zong. Also with the support of Yuan court, he successfully su uh, suppressed uh, the Sambiotou rebellion led by King Zhong and Ying Yang from the Kulu military families. So it was under these circumstances that the King Wang Zhong strongly promoted the intermarriage between Kublai's daughter, Princess Dragook Hutulu Kalmish, and Wang Zhong's crown prince, Wang Chen, um, who was later titled as the King Chongliu. In the marriage proposal, the court of state promised to permanently obey the duty of tribute. Since the time of Chongliu, the Kulu ruler abandoned using the temple names with the suffix Zongzu and was recorded in the title of Wang. Every crown prince must be selected from the sons that, that were given birth by um, the Yuan princess and would be sent to the Yuan court for education before marrying another Yuan princess as his future queen. Um, when the princess who took a Kalmish and the King Chongliu was ride, were riding the imperial carriage around the city of Kolyo after the marriage ceremony in 1274. The masses were joyfully cheering. It says, 世界救生之好是东方之名享百年生平之乐, uniting a good relationship of nephew and uncle for generations. People in the East can therefore enjoy the happiness of peace and prosperity for hundreds of years. So King Chongliu actually spent much of his time as the capital of Yuan Dadu with six time visits when he was a crown prince and another 11 times when he was a king of the Kolyu. The Kagami Afakido Shifari painting um, was commissioned by King Chongliu's beloved concubine Suki. She was from the Enyang King clan, which produced 12 minister level officials in the last 100 years of the Kolyu period. She was a granddaughter of King Chongliu, Jing Zhou Li, a national hero, achieving the victory against the Zakida invasion in 1216. This Alpha Kiddushvara painting, in its massive scale, which measures uh, 4.2 meters in height, was done two years after King Chongliu's death. And at the time, Suki had already been promoted to be the concubine of the first rank of the King Chongxiang. The strife for the king's favor in the imperial harem was a troublesome issue for the king. After the Goryeo Kingdom became a fossil state of Yuan, the Goryeo uh, Palace was divided into two factions. The Yuan princess, the queen of Goryeo, leading the concubines and palace ladies from the Yuan court, and the concubines from the major families in the Goryeo court. The king's favor for the women at the time could intensify the factional struggle as a colonial court and also transform its relations with the Yuan court. The Yuan princess Budashui married Chongxiang in 1296. At the time, she was the second, uh, second Mong Mongolian queen of Kolyu and the aunt of Emperor Wu Zong and Ren Zong of Yuan. So the, the antagonism between Princess Budashui and the concubines of native Goryeo had been fierce. However, Goryeo had recorded that Suki kept, kept a very friendly uh, relations with the Yuan court and the Yuan princess. Concubine Suki was a frequent host of luxurious palace banquets. She was fond of uh, socializing and entertaining Yuan envoys. At the request of the King Chongxiang, the Empress, uh, Empress Daji of Yuan sent the Mongolian headdress Gugu to Kogyuban Suki as a gift. The so Gugu is two feet in height and covered by red gold silk and decorated with uh, pearls and dreams. 
uh, it can be examined from the uh, official portrait painting of the Empress uh, Radana Shiri. Kokubai Suki was always uh, dressed with gugu when she was receiving Yuan missionaries. A 14th century Chinese document, Cao Muzi, notes that only the imperial um, ha harem of the Yuan court, uh, the wives of the emperors, and the legal wives of the court officials uh, were required uh, to wear gugu. And Goros also records that Suki was a very powerful figure in Goryeo Palace, since her daily expenses have met equal status with the Yuan princess, who was the queen of the Goryeo. One special feature of the Kagami scroll is the uh, phonix pattern in the Suki transparent uh, garment. According to Yuan Shi, images of dragon and phonix were abandoned for making clothes except for being used by the empress and an emperor of the Yuan. Another very important information is rec recorded is that in 1275, King Cholo commissioned 12 paintings of Afal Kiddeshvara and sent them as birthday gifts to the Emperor Kublai Khan of Yuan. And we also see that uh, in a Yuan dynasty art critics investigation on paintings written by Tang Ho, it appressed that uh, the Afal Kiddeshvara paintings produced in uh, Kolyo are delicate, brushworks are smooth, sophisticated, and resplendent. So based on this historical evidence, this painting was likely to be Kokyuba Suki's gift to Yuan royal family. Um, before I look into the iconography in more details, I want to clarify different names of Avalkiteshvara. The name of Wotemu Avalkiteshvara, Willow Branch Avalkiteshvara, White Robe Avalkiteshvara was sometimes used interchangeable in the past documents, uh, in particular the Japanese sources of the censorship and scholarly discussion. And um, so first of all, what are they? None of this has a Sanskrit origin. They are amongst the so-called 33 forms of Avakiteshvara in the context of East Asian Buddhist culture. The rest of 30 forms are dragon head, sutra holding, oral, strolling, lotus reclining, and so on and so forth. Um, scriptural sources could hardly provide resemblances, and they are supposed to be a popular interpretation of the 33 manifestations of Avakiteshvara recounted in the chapter of the Universal Gate in the Lotus Sutra, namely a Buddha, a Prataka Buddha, a Shravaka, Mahabrahma, a Indra, and so on and so forth. So, but we do have found some relevant texts, such as the chapter uh, Portraits and Ritual Protocol, Hua Xiang Yi Gui Pi in scripture spoken as a Bodhi Manda on the one syllable well turning king of the Buddha's crown, Puti Chang So Shu Yi Zi Di Lu Wang Jing, which recounts Da Hui Pu Sa Yo Bian, Hua Bai Yi Guan Zi Zai, Yi Lian Hua Man Zhuang Yan Qi Shen, Yi Bao Zen Jiao Luo Pi, Yu Shou Ba Zhen Duo Mo Ni Bao. 第二首诗愿，此菩萨是莲花祖母，因于莲花上座。As the right side of the great Western Bodhisattva Mahamati, it paints white-robed Avalokiteshvara. Lotus garland is used to decorate her body. She wears a garment over the shoulder with decorative treasures and silk fabric coiling around. The right hand. Holds many jewels, and the left hand is in the gesture of wish granting. The Bodhisattva is the mother of the Lotus clan, so she should be seated on the Lotus pedestal. Um, very interesting. The text points out cis white robed Avakiteshvara as female. And another one, the historic sutra of a thousand of bright eyed Avakiteshvara um, recounts that. Um, so who want to get rid of the illness on the body should practice the willow dhamma as for the portrait 
of medicine king of Akiteshvara, the good looking appearance and ornamentation are like what had been discussed before, but with the right hand holding the willow branch. So in this text, it means that the willow branch has a function to uh, curing illness. And um, the earliest historical text recounting that water moon of Akiteshvara is found in a 9th century commentaries and critiques on Chinese art, uh, titled as uh, Recording Famous Paintings Through History, Li Bai Ming Hua Ji. Zhou Fang, Zi Jing Xuan, Guan Zhi Xuan Zhou Chang Shi, Chu Xiao Zhang Xuan Hua, Ho Zhe Xiao Yi, Po Ji Feng Zi, Quan Fa Yi Guan, Bu Jing Lu Li, Yi Shang Jing Jian, Cai Se Rou Li, so the text points out that the Bodhisattva painting in the format of Waterloo style was the innovation of the Tang Dynasty court painter Zhou Fang who specialized in painting the gorgeous and plump appearance of court ladies. As we can see here, Zhou Fang's painting, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Zhou Fang's painting were famous uh, for the delicate use of soft and bright colors, exquisite garment uh, textures and sophisticated brushworks. Um, but, um, about the authenticity of this scroll, um, I think no one would be 100% sure that it is a work by Zhou Fang, but um, the scroll did uh, get the seal from the Sun Emperor Gao Zong, and in the Shi Qu Bao Ji, the catalog of calligraphies and paintings collected in the Qing court, it identifying um, the scroll to be in a work of Zhou Fang, and we also can see the comparison uh, between the court ladies in the scroll and uh, the lady in the painting of the uh, guiding bodhisattva uh, in Lu Pusa uh, that is collected in the British Museum. Um, so I think it, 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 it is a Tang Dynasty work. So, um, and return to the text, the text also tells us that in Shengguang Temple, Zhou Fang decorated the shielded entrance gate of the stupa with a screen painting of uh, water moon of Akiteshvara for the purpose of seeking protection. That is what uh, Yan Zhang means. Uh, from this text, we also kind of know that the deficient of labors uh, in making this painting as the coloring was done by a different person who is called Liu Zhen. Um, the catalog of famous painting from the Tang Dynasty, Tang Chao Ming Hua Lu, that also records that in the final years of Emperor De Zong, more than 10 paintings of uh, Zhou Fang were purchased by Shila Korean people in high price in the area of Jianghuai. So, it might be that the Korean people had already seen uh, Zhou Fang's paintings of Ava Kiddushvara. In the, um, this one is a very familiar one. In the lower left panel of a silk painting, Ava Kiddushvara with one thousand hands and one thousand eyes, discovered in the Dunhuang Library Cave, the inscription identifies uh, the figure in three quarters view Sitting opposite to the kneeling female donor is water moon of Akiteshvara Bodhisattva. The text in the lower middle panel tells that it, the painting was commissioned by the Guiyi Jing regional governor Ma Qianjin in 943 for the sake of saving nation and protect its people. It is the earliest found painting of water moon of Akiteshvara with um, identifying inscription. The text indicates that Ma Qianjin deliberately recruited skillful craftsmen to paint water moon of Akiteshvara after seeing the white moon in the early autumn. Actually, since the Tang Dynasty, water moon of Akiteshvara has been a very popular iconography that were uh, praised, painted by scholar officials. 
um, Bai Ju once wrote a poem that Hua Shui Yue Guan Yin Zan, Jin Lu Shui Zhong, Xu Bai Guang Zhong, Yi Du Qi Xiang, Wan Yuan Jie Kong, Di Zi Ju Yi, Shi Xin Gui Yi, Shen Shen Jie Jie, Chang Wo Wei Shi. In the midst of、uh, clean green water, in the midst of hollow white light, while seeing the portrait, ten thousand of predestined、um, affinities becomes to be empty. Follow Jesus, where from heart to be a Buddhist during the lifetime and calamity. Avakitashvara would always be my teacher. And、um, the fragmented words on Northern Dream by Monsu Yan also recounts that the minister. Assistant Jiang Ning was a distinguished figure. Every time when he visited the house of court officials, people regard him as signs of of auspiciousness and styling him as Water Moon Avakitashvara. A later Chinese depiction of、uh, Avakitashvara done during the 13th or 14th century shows a more、uh, feminine and indigenous,、uh, indigenized image. The pine tree、uh, here replaces the bamboo groove, and we also see,、uh, sorry, we also see the、uh, waterfalls. There are actually typical features of Chinese landscape paintings at the time. So, combined with her relaxed pose of contemplation, it reminds us more of、uh, a Chinese literati、uh, painting depicting a classical scholar that、uh, retiring to hermitage in the deep mountain. So. In systems, different identities of Avakitashvara in paintings were often intermingled and superimposed. Symbols, iconographies do not compete with or replace one another, but mutually authenticated each other and reinforced the efficacy of Avakitashvara as the omnipotent deity. In the case of Goryeo、uh, Gory Avakitashvara paintings, a common iconography depicted is the boy Sadana, worshiping upwards Avakitashvara with hands joined. The text source for the scene is the chapter、uh, "Entry into Dharma Realm"、uh, in the Avatamasaka Sutra, "Ru Fa Jie Hua Yan Jing." Sadana visits、uh, Fushtila, and Fushtila delivered an introduction on the Avakitashvara's、uh, place of residence. It says, "Good boy, in the south there is a mountain named Potalaka, and lives a Bodhisattva named Avakitashvara. A mountain over the sea has many sages, formed by masses of treasures. It has got utmost purity and quietness." Flowers, fruits, and trees are everywhere. Currents of springs and water ponds are prosperous. Avakitashvara, the man of valor and vigor, lives in the mountain for the benefits of all the sentient beings. You must go and inquire Pharaoh's merits. He will show you the great, skillful method of teachings by Buddhas and Bodhisattva. After listening to Fushtila's advice, Sadana comes to Potalaka Mountain, and once Sadana has met Avakitashvara, he jumps up enthusiastically, clasps his hands, and carefully observes with concentration and eyes fixed. Looking at the valley where Avakitashvara lives, Sadana sees currents of crystal clear waters,、uh, groves are luxuriant. Fragrant grasses are soft. Avakitashvara sits on a pedestal of diamonds and jewels in lotus position.、Um, so, the space, the space arrangement and motifs in the paintings actually strictly follows the descriptions in the sutra. The Avakitashvara is receiving Sadama's visit in distance. Why Sadana bends the head in adoration at the feet of Avakitashvara?、Um, just very recently, sorry, it's yeah. Just very recently, there is an exhibition held in the Cleveland Museum of Art titled、uh, 
interpretation of materiality, gold in Korean art. Um, one highlighted object on display is this 30th century Afatamasaka Sucha, mixed with ink and glue. The refined gold powder was applied on the smooth surface of the dark blue indigo dyed mulberry paper. In the practice of copying a Buddhist sutra, gold served as a perfect medium to visualize the splendid world of Buddhas and their awakening teachings. The frontispiece here also depicts boy Sadhana visiting Buddhist deities, such, which was uh, recounted in the chapter of uh, entry into uh, Dharma realm. Um, Professor Ide Senosuke from Kyushu University and Professor uh, Yonso Park from SOAS have pointed out another important text to consider is this um, memorabilia of the Three Kingdom, Sangu Yusa, a collection of historical accounts, legends, and folk tales of Asian and Korean um, so combined by the Kolyo Buddhist monk in the 12th 18th. One of the stories tells that the Korean Buddhist priest um, Yui Sang paid a worship to Avakiteshvara, who lived in Naksan at the sea coast on the way returning from Tang, China. Naksan is Korean version of Potalaka Mountain. Yui Sang received a string of crystal rosary and the dragon of Easter Sea, Dong Halong Wang, also presented him a wish granting Jew. So, based on this text, they identified the groups of people in the lower sections uh, of Diet uh, Scroll is the eight legions of Divas and Nagas, Babu Tianlong, and the man who is leading the procession and wearing a red robe is identified to be the dragon king of the Easter Sea. Um, a complementary interpretation is drawn from one of the shouting verses in the chapter Universal Gate, Pumenping, in Lotus Sutra, which reads, uh, if someone sometimes floating and drifting over the gigantic sea, encountering with dragons, fishes, pharaohs, demons, and hardships, if they shun the force of Avakiteshvara, so they would not be submerged by the waves. Um, and I also want to show um, um, very lovely details um, in the scroll. Uh, kept in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Here you can see uh, the painting with complete mountain style and with the uh, hanging pose. Um, it depicts, on, on the top of the scroll, it depicts a, a rabbit pounding the elixir under kasha tree inside a full moon. Uh, this special iconography was frequently seen in the town and stone bronze mirrors. And it has also got variety um, of texture sources from different regions. Uh, I will name some of them. First of all, in the Afatamasaka Sutra, uh, it recounts um, wherever the light of the full moon reaches, it brings ref uh, refreshment, auspiciousness, virtue, and um, brightness. And also in the um, analogy of the heavenly question, Ni Tianwen, uh, the third century Chinese poet Fu Xuan writes, uh, uh, Inside the moon, what it is, uh, the white rabbit pounds herbs, auspiciousness flourishes and blessings descend. More interestingly, it is mentioned in the uh, great town records on the Western regions, that recounts an ancient Indian legend story during Xuanzang's visit to the stupa of three animals, San Shota in the state of Farashina. The stupa of three animals was a place where Tathagata cultivated bodhisattva practices and committed self-immolation by burning. Back to the beginning of the year, when Indra uh, cultivated bodhisattva practice, 
here, he manifested to be an older man. After greetings, the older man asked the three animals, fox, rabbit, and ape, brought, fruit, uh, brought for, uh, for food. Having searched respectively, the fox got injured a fish along the river and the ape brought fruits, but, but the rabbit came back empty handed. The old man then doubted the rabbit's sincerity. The rabbit felt aggrieved and said, Benevolent one, my body is humble and weak. I could hardly fulfill your requirement, but I dare to sacrifice my humble body to fill your meal. So, Renjua, I am a man the rabbit then jumped into the fire and killed himself. At the moment, the old man restored his body as Inja and sighed with sorrow. How could this come to this? I have felt the heart and will not vanish your remains. Inja placed the rabbit's body onto the moon so that it could be handed down to the later generation. So it says, The story explains how the rabbit comes to the moon. So another interesting thing to consider is that the story probably explains the reason why some of the expressions of moon in the Sanskrit are related with shasha, the word for rabbit. For instance, uh, shasha bindu means a uh, waste rabbit on it. Shasha lakshana means spotted a rabbit on it. Thank you. That is the end of my presentation. And um, I'm looking forward to your discussion, uh, to your comments. Thank you. Um, shall I? Right. Yes, thank you, Mia. Um, yeah. Thank you for this very rich visual display. Um, so we open the floor for discussion, for comments, sure. criticism, questions. Yes, Jacqueline uh, raised her hand. Yeah. You're muted. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I am, I mean, I am very new in this topic. So I ask question might be too simple. But I just want to know how yeah. is this corpus of painting related to the theme of Dun Huang and the Silk Road? Um, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> this is a very important question, actually. I think um, the, nowadays the earliest uh, painting we can find is. Uh, of Watan Avakishvara is in Dunhuang. And the so Dunhuang piece shows the iconographical characteristics of uh, Watan Avakishvara. As you can see, the bamboos, um, the halos, and how the Avakishvara's positions, the posture, the gesture. Um, so I think always, uh, if, I, if I like come across uh, some images, I always go back to Dunhuang there is a rich uh, amount of visual materials uh, to, to be a ref reference, I think. Oh, so the color and the, the paint, the quality of the paint also related to the Dun, Dun Huang uh, series, is that? Um, I think it's, it, it's um, iconographically relevant. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, other questions or comments? And I probably cannot see you all, so um, maybe just unmute yourself and, and speak up. Okay, uh, no I, I, I do have a question. Hi. <laughs> yes. Hi, Mia. Uh, 
Yeah, I have uh, two quick questions, if that's okay. Um, so the, the first one, uh, I was quite struck by the Kagami Shrine uh, image of, and the monumentality of that painting. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about scale in, in relation to these works and um, uh, the, uh, and the significance of that. Um, and the second question is, uh, is there any information about what these, uh, were these paintings of Avalokiteshvara shown with other paintings? Were they shown um, as a set of something or were they shown by themselves? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, um, this huge size of um, Avalokiteshvara painting, I think uh, um, one reason is because of its, uh, most of it's um, of them are elite commissioned, and um, it got it has got the enough budget. And second, uh, some of them are um, were done in a scale of war painting, um, um, and placed in the temple for worship. I think so. This huge uh, size, I think, is uh, to. Um, Mm, to emit the size of war painting, the murals in the temple. And the second question, yeah, um, actually there are 165 Buddhist paintings um, um, uh, survived, um, attributed to the Kolo period. And um, um, Watermoon Avakiteshvara is one big category. And apart from Watermoon Avakiteshvara, there is, um, uh, um, um, Amidaba Buddha and um, um, the Earth uh, Treasure Bodhisattva Dizang Pusa and the uh, Buddhist assemblies. So um, they are um, all, um, uh, most of them currently kept in the Japanese temples. Yeah, is that a five? My question. Okay, we have Nikita. I have one thing to ask a question. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mia, for your interesting presentation. It's, uh, you know, it's such a nice overview of, of all, like from, from Dunhuang to, to, uh, to, to, to Japan, to Korea, of Avalokiteshvara, um, um, so I really, really appreciate it. So my, um, it will be not actually a question, but more a kind of a suggestion or a comment. Mm -hmm. um, in your presentation, you mentioned um, since, those uh, images were created in uh, Koryo. So um, I guess it would be very uh, natural to see at Korean sources. You mentioned in your presentation some Kukyusa. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I just wonder if you, if there, are, again, I'm, I'm not a big specialist on Korean historiography, but um, uh, probably it would be also useful to look more into the, uh, like, uh, I don't know, I don't know, like Samguk Saiki, for example, or probably some kind of veritable records. Again, I'm not sure if they, I know that Choson dynasty, they had veritable records. I'm not mm -hmm. sure about Korea dynasty. Yeah, so I mean, what's your usage of Korean sources? <laughs> if it, yeah. If... yeah, I think there are um, a lot of Korean sources. Um, for example, the um, um, mem memorabilia of three kingdoms um, and also, yeah. um, some um, the text written by the um, Korean scholars um, Li Qixian, um, and um, also you know it's a period that um, Korean had uh, many contacts with Yuan um, China so the Mongolians so I think the Mongolian documents and the, the Yuan court document is also very important to look at. And one of my major source is the Goliosa, the Gaolish Goliosa. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it is okay. Korean source. It is Korean source. Um, the stories of the um, Kogyobasuki, they're all Korean sources, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I mean, I'm asking this question because you didn't, you didn't mention it, so that's why I was. There, there, there are yeah, so, oh, okay, so that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, it's also probably will be interesting to think about the transmission. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure how it's possible to uh, identify, but this kind of uh, uh, transmission of uh, Avalokiteshvara imagery to mm -hmm. the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. um, do you know when was the kind of earliest 
the presentation, like earlier presentation of Avalokiteshvara in Korea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Buddhism in Korea starts very early, um, but you know, the paintings of Avalokiteshvara, most of them in the colonial period were destroyed because of war. So that's why um, we can only find 165, around 165 paintings of, um, you know, Buddhist paintings survived during the colonial period and um, with the inscriptions of the Yuan dynasty. Oh, I see. Uh, I mean, I see. Not many of the paintings survived, but we can still see uh, the paintings in the frontispiece um, of the sutras, the Bodhisattva, but not many, I think not many of the paintings, the scrolls. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck with your dissertation. Looking Thank forward you. to it. Okay. Yes, we're all looking forward to that. Um, other questions? Yes, uh, Han Lin's here. Yeah. The translation. The translations. Um, sorry, do you mean the translations? Um, do you mean the ch translation in Chinese or translation? No, I think she means that your English translations of the Chinese oh. sutra. Oh, it's so English. I, I did this. Okay, so that was one of the questions. Good job okay. translating. And then the other question, is she right? Um, in understanding that you said water, moon, white robe, willow branch, Avalokiteshvara. Oh, I interchangeable. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, it's it. I mean, in um, in the labels, the labels we are we have now are used interchangeable. Sometimes, I mean, in the um, 15th century connoisseurship, 16th century connoisseurship, they are used interchangeable. Sometimes it is called water moon of Akiteshvara. Sometimes it is called white robe. Sometimes it is called willow branch. So, I mean, the documents of common social. Is that all right? It has to be because she cannot answer. Okay. okay. So. Um, you refer to the same figure. Um, I mean, they refer to as the paintings in this set. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, okay. Um, other questions or comments? Yes, sorry, um, you told. Hello, uh, Maie. So I actually, hello. <laughs> I actually have a question um, about the Ningbo workshop. Yeah. So um, because normally we just talk about the um, how the Ningbo workshop produced the paintings and the, the connection between Japan and China. So I'm wondering how the, I want to know more about how the Ningbo workshop contribute to the relation between the and the exchange between China and the Korea. So could you explain more about that? That's my curiosity. Thank you. Yeah, um, um, yes, that is a um, very important chapter of my dissertation. And because um, 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 the Ningbo, there are a lot of, um, you know, um, um, businessmen coming from um, Chinese businessmen come to um, Koryo from the uh, Ningbo and uh, their the landing port for the um, diplomatic missions. Uh, also, um, you know, um, I think they the their the monks comes to comes to travel around the Jiangzhe area. The Korean monks travel around Jiangzhe area and probably in a very similar way with uh, Japanese monks and um, how they could brought the Ningbo paintings to Korea. And we do have the records that um, the Korean missions, missionaries brought back the uh, copies of the Xiangguo temple in the Northern Song. 
So they copied the whole um, mirrors in the Xiangguo temples and they brought all the copies into um, Korea and um, did the whole mirrors um, copied one in Korea. Thank you. Thank you. Anyways, other comments, questions? I, I actually have a question. Okay. So I was wondering about, because um, Yu Ping asked about the this monumentality Mm -hmm. uh, of the paintings. And I was wondering if you were looking at um, representations or depictions of water moon um, Guanyin in, on a smaller scale, right? So in, in books, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the frontispieces, but uh, other, uh, there are a number of other books, obviously, that um, mm -hmm. Um, have such images? Are you looking at those and where are those from? Um, I'm also looking at um, um, the frontispiece in the uh, sutras made in Goryeo, Korea. And I will compare them with the uh, uh, larger Avakiteshvara paintings. Um, they will, so, because this set paintings I'm looking at and also the um, sutra, um, were actually commissioned by similar groups of people who were done by the Kolyo court uh, or the um, uh, high rank priest in Korea. Um, but normally um, we don't have earlier um, scrolls of Avakiteshvara paintings in the massive scale uh, survived. So what are the earliest books that survived, the books or sutras? That survive with this image. With is this image? Um, um, in Korean, I'm not sure if it is water no avakitish for about standing bodhisattvas around uh, 12th century, 11th century um, sutras manuscript. That's it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Other questions, comments. Sorry, can I just follow up on my okay. question earlier, <laughs> just very quickly? I, I was just wondering about that very large painting again, because there are these Korean uh, Buddhist paintings that um, uh, that survive from later period, but um, they're very large and they're actually displayed outdoors in a ritual context. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the size is, is really monumental. So I'm just wondering, is there a possibility that such paintings, like the one that you showed, could have been displayed outdoors, for example, or a different kind of ritual context, for example? I don't know. I think for ritual uh, context, it's it's possible because um, some scholars argue that the one kept in the Kagami Jinja was for uh, to um, to um, a memorial purpose for the King Chongliu because it was done two years after the death of King Chongliu and the Suki. Um, with uh, his beloved concubines, but um, um, but for the outdoors display, I'm not sure because the texture is quite uh, fragile. Um, um, it could be in inside the temple, I think. Sure. Okay. So inside would mean not outdoors, right? Yeah, not outdoors. OK. okay. Um, well, if there are no more questions or comments, then I think we can finish. Um, then we'll finish early today. Um, so thank you very much uh, for the enlightening talk. <laughs> and I'll stop the recording. <laughs>